Mindfulness has been bandied about for, I don't know, a few decades now. It's kind of a, an in thing, an in word in uh, new thought, in new age, in meditation, etc. It's a form of meditation practice, actually, and a, a form of life practice, actually, being mindful. But it, it originates from the Buddhist tradition, so it's been around thousands of years. It is, mindfulness, is the ability to be non-judging, to have patience and alertness, have beginner's mind or, or kindergarten mind, as some people might say, and trust, to learn trust in the world. It's the ability to be non-striving as you pursue, as you declare, as you bring into your life whatever it is you have decided to manifest, to not be striving towards it, to allow yourself to thrive even before it shows up in here in the 3D world, to be present, to be in the now, as they say, to practice acceptance and letting go, that, that radical forgiveness, to be in gratitude and generosity and appreciation of your life. The benefits of doing mindful practice is self-control within a state of alertness because you're very alert to what's going on around you. And yet you have self-control, you're calm, you're centered, you're grounded. Having objectivity and an enhanced flexibility to what's going on, oh, this is not working, well then I will change tactics and all's there and all's good and it's smooth. No matter what approaches you, it becomes a flexibility that becomes smooth. Your concentration gets improved. Your mental clarity gets improved. And so to the clarity of your description, your, your imagination, your envisioning of that which you have decided to manifest next. It upgrades your emotional intelligence. And many of us need that. And occasionally I need that myself. And the ability to relate to others and oneself with a non-judgment, a kindness, a, an acceptance and compassion. And all of these things, they're wonderful to achieve, of course. They make life easier. They may make life more exciting, happier, joyful, more joyful. And I have I talk about this practice all the time. I don't usually use the word mindfulness, but... I'm talking about the abilities that come from it and of the results of using this practice. The title of my talk today is The Fullness of Mind. And I want to remind you about keeping the mind full. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. Keeping the mind full, full with the best thoughts, full of the most magnificent ideas, full with that which you have decided to experience, full of those visions, envisioning, full of that envisioning Im imagination plus feeling um, idea and tool to bring forth into your life that which you have decided to manifest. Because, you know, manifestation can be very simple. It's usually not easy necessarily, especially when we're working on changing our perspective about life, our beliefs and subconscious thoughts and triggers. You know, Lao Tzu once said, once asked, do you have patience to wait till your mud settles and the water is clear? Can you remain unmoving till the right action arises by itself? till that intuition, that uh, DM, that direct message, that instant message from the universe informs you of what to do next. Can you have the patience for that? Can you live like the example of the dirty water? You remember this example? I've said, it, I've talked about it before. The glass of dirty water and you constantly drench it with clean water and eventually what you get in this glass will be clean water. 
And so too, must we use this practice with our thoughts? Because as we continuously fill our mind with the imagination, the ideas, the words, and the feelings of experiencing a, a new car, a new house, a better relationship at work or play or whatever, peace of mind, or any declaration we are manifesting, so too will we change the dirty waters in our mind, in our subconscious, in our belief system, to the clarity of which is needed for the creation of it to show up in our lives. And in the changing of that perspective, be open to accepting the actuality of manifesting that thing or idea into form, into our experience. You can use the tools of spiritual mind treatment, journal in some way, joining the affirmation revolution and use the affirmative incantations I write. Set your phone timer to beep every once in a while and take that moment to be remindful to yourself of what you have decided to bring into your life. And staying aware of your self-talk. What is it you're saying in your head to yourself? The words and thought forms that feed one or the other wolf in your mind. Do you remember that story? Remember the story of the grandfather telling the tale of the two wolves? It's a tale that describes the power of mindfulness. What you fill your mind with. What you fill your mind with is what you experience eventually. It is a story that I think bears constant rereading as it delivers new wisdom each time, at least to me. So I'm going to tell you this story again. One evening, an old Cherokee told his grandchildren about a battle that goes on inside people. He said, my children, the battle is between two wolves inside us all. One is evil. It is anger, envy, jealousy, sorrow, regret. It's greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego, both inferiority and superiority. The other, he says to his grandchildren, is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth compassion, and faith. The grandson thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather, well, which wolf wins? And the old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. Now, usually, the story ends there. And Somebody telling the story uh, starts talking about, you know, feeding that wolf and what that all means. But actually, I found out this time, as I looked up that story again and made sure I had written it down correctly, that there's a few more sentences in the original tradition of the Cherokee to that story. And it goes like this, the grandfather talking still. If you feed them right, they both win. You see, if I only choose to feed the light wolf, the dark wolf will be hiding around every corner, waiting for me to become distracted or weak and jump in to get the attention he craves. You will always be angry and will always fight the light wolf. But if I acknowledge him, the grandfather continued, he is happy and the light wolf is happy and we all win. For the dark wolf has many qualities, tenacity, courage, fearlessness, strong-willed and great strategic thinking 
that I have need for at times. These are the very things the light wolf lacks. But the light wolf has compassion, caring, strength, and the ability to recognize what is in the best interest of all. You see, children, the light wolf needs the dark wolf at his side, at her side. To feed only one would starve the other, and they will become uncontrollable. To feed and care for both means they will serve you well and do nothing that is not a part of something greater, something good, something of a magnificent life. Feed them both and there will be no more internal struggle for your attention. And when there is no battle inside, you can listen to the voices of deeper knowing that will guide you in choosing what is right in every circumstance. Peace, my children, is the Cherokee mission in life. A man or woman who has peace inside has everything. A man or woman who is pulled apart by the war inside of him or her has nothing. How you choose to interact with the opposing forces within you will determine your life. Starve one or the other or guide them both. Yeah? Have you ever heard that second half? It's amazing. We are not to ignore the dark wolf, our shadow, as you might um, phrase it in a psychological term, in a Jungian term, our shadow. We turn away, yes, we turn away from its addictions to anger, envy, jealousy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, or superiority. Lies, the lies, the triggers, the false pride, the ego, the ego when we edge God out when we don't allow the intuition from the universe to energize us, to inform us, to educate us. And at the same time, we still use its tenacity, its courage, its fearlessness, its strong will and great strategic thinking to conquer our fears, our ideas of lack and limited thinking, some of which we've had for decades. And yet, no matter how long we've had these junk ideas, we can eliminate them. We can put them aside. We can make them not have dominion over our life. Doing that, feeding both, allows the inclusiveness of the non-judging, the patience, the alertness, the beginner's mind, the trust, being present, practicing acceptance and letting go of the past, being in gratitude and generosity, all of those things that are in mindfulness practices. With the law of you, we combine those with the law of you and your use of the law of cause and effect, my use of the law of cause and effect, the law of attraction in command and in control not just saying these words and keep hearing from ourselves. No, you're not. No, it's not. That's not going to show up. You don't have any power. We can turn away from that junk idea and yet use the power from the dark wolf that brings forth those junk ideas and bring it into the light. Use it for the light. Use it for the law of you to bring forth that which you have decided to have in your life. Like I have said, manifesting all of life is full. It's a full body holistic experience, right? It's not just a mental experience. It's your whole body. You got to get your whole body into it. You got to use what I call the divine matrix of brain, heart, and gut, the intuition, the imagination, and also use your full mind, not just your full brain, but your full mind, the mind, the mind of God that is within you, the the energy, the intelligence of the divine that is already there within you. 
that it's just waiting there for you to request its use, request its ideas. And thus, you have mindfulness, not just mindfulness. Feed the strengths of light, love, peace, patience, and wisdom, while you use the strengths of the dark, tenacity, cleverness, and courage. Be mindful with the strengths of the dark and the strengths of the light to achieve what you have conceived. Like the dark matter of space and the light of pure energy combined to make this universe, so too can you bust through soar and zoom into your best life using your powerful manifesting machine, the fullness of mind. So use your mindfulness practices, whatever they may be or whatever combination that they are, to be mindful, F-U-L-L, mindful, and watch how your life increases with joy, happiness, peace, love, grace, and all that you have declared. It should be. Thank you so much. Namaste.